The Cretaceous had just begun, and in North Africa was the largest predator of all time. This was the most feared, and its name was Theropod, known by science as one of the most dangerous specimens of its time. It roamed for some time with the Spinosaurus, enjoying the beginning of a dynasty that would end up spanning millions of years. Its gigantic size, along with a huge sale, would help secure its legacy. So get comfortable, because today we will tell you all about the evil twin of the Spinosaurus. Before we start, we want you to accompany us and until the end of the video. And to make it even more exciting, if you accompany us until the end, we will give you a special greeting in our next video and you will have the opportunity to win an incredible prize. You won't want to miss this. Subscribe now and become part of our Jurassic Corner community. Today it remains one of the most iconic dinosaurs that have ever existed. The theropod is the most famous after the well-known Tyrannosaurus Rex and of course the Velociraptor. However, despite its fame or stature, almost no one is aware of the fact that the Spinosaurus, in reality, had a twin much more fearsome and voracious than him. This dino imposed itself in Africa, having an almost equal power in appearance, and likewise was carrying out its own dominion in South America. We begin by stating that paleontology was responsible for finding, in the year 2011, the first fossil attributed to this imposing dinosaur. This was located in the Alcantara Formation in northern Brazil, and the remains showed the most frontal snout. Paleontologists were quick to note that this newly discovered dinosaur was a member of the Spinosaurus family, as as its snout presided over many characteristics, these are only seen in other Spinosauruses. The clear classification led to a rapid description and denomination with the founders, calling it Oxala Cumbensis, this being a nod to the African deity Obatala. The discovery of such a dinosaur in Brazil was big news, but not necessarily a monumental one like the Spinosauruses in Brazil, as these were known since the late 1990s. However, despite arriving a little late to the party, the finding still left many people agape, not due to a crazy characteristic or something like that, but because of its size, and especially the size of the snout. In addition to a fragment of skull found, it was later found evident that it eclipsed the discoveries of the previously pointed Spinosauruses, reaching the point of surpassing them. Almost all other known theropods, thanks to the most recent studies, calculated that adults weighed between 5 and 7 tons, being this the largest predator in Brazil. In addition to holding the podium of one of the 10 heaviest theropods ever known. Naturally, its large size would have placed it in a privileged place in the food chain of its time, to the point of being untouchable for other carnivores. It is commonly thought that, like the Spinosaurus, it was also the main predator of the environment due to the shared role between the Spinosauruses and the Oxala. As the two were very close, paleontologists have asserted based on evidence that they are the same size. For a long time, there has been a lot of curiosity about the relationship between them, a curiosity that is only accentuated by the fact that both lived exactly at the same time, which leads some to consider that Oxala is not a new dinosaur, but rather a new species of Spinosauruses that could have arrived in South America through Africa, since at that time, the two continents were much closer than they are currently. Today, it is also possible a direct ancestor of other species have been in South America all the time, as approximately 140 million years ago, this was physically connected with Africa, and therefore, the population of Spinosauruses could have been divided. This division finally led to Oxala arriving in Brazil. In addition to all this, there is still another argument that Oxala is not even a new species of Spinosauruses, but that it is simply a younger adult of the already described Spinosaurus Egyptiacus, which would not have finished growing yet. For now, it is officially considered a valid genus with the strongest evidence of its uniqueness, the clearest differences being those seen in their skulls, as is the case with Oxala, which had the teeth tighter, a relatively thicker jaw and a snout that had to straighten compared to the Spinosaurus. However, the similarities were still astonishing, and it was widely believed that the two were very close relatives. Now, with paleontologists considering that Oxala would have been more closely related to the Spinosaurus than to other Brazilian Spinosaurs, normally the questions surrounding its relationship with the Spinosaurus would be analyzing its entire skeleton, although this is a bit complicated to examine more closely the bones of the Oxala, as there are practically not many of its bones bones available to be studied. Tragically, after its discovery and all the unrecovered material was stored, what was left of its remains was placed in the largest natural history museum in Brazil, which burned down in 2018. This caused the loss of even all the bones of the Oxala. Since then, no more fossils have been found or unearthed. Along with not being able to fully answer the question about its relationship with the Spinosaurus, the destruction of the bones also meant that we don't know much about its general appearance. Paleontologists are not even 100 percent sure if it had a sail or just a 
crest on its head. Although due to its proposal of a close relationship with the Spinosaurus, most reconstructions and studies assume that it had a sail that it could have used in numerous ways, including heat regulation, display, and intimidation, while making individuals appear larger than they actually were. On the other hand, paleontologists can fortunately say with greater confidence that in reality, this prehistoric nightmare had a sword-shaped back, as well as some characteristics were more universal, including how extremely robust this specimen looked. Now, it is very likely that these relatives of Oxala had sturdy arms, being equipped with relatively large claws, which gives them the appearance of having hooks for hands. In reality, deadly hooks. The holotype showed that Oxella also had a huge skull, which looked a bit like that of a modern crocodile, and could reach 1.35 meters or 4.4 feet long, making it larger than the skull of the Acrocanthosaurus. Inside this gigantic skull, it had a mouth that was lined with more than 40 sharp oval-shaped conical teeth, a true machine for grinding and shredding the meat it will capture. All of this paints a quite threatening picture, and yet these characteristics were actually more good news than bad. For coexisting dinosaurs, these traits of Oxella served much better for fishing than for killing dinosaurs. Specifically, paleontologists believe that it used its large claws to cut and hook large and slippery fish, while its teeth further prevented the escape of the same, thus finding an effective hunting form thanks to its conical nature. In addition, the teeth were arranged in the form of a rosette, which basically made them interlock while creating practically a fish trap. For its part, it could be said that the anatomy of the crocodile adds more fuel to the idea that Oxella was effective effectively a master fisherman. Even its environment suggests that it consumed seafood like many similar large fish or sometimes exactly the same as those seen in the habitat of the Spinosaurus, which lived alongside Oxala. If you are enjoying the video, support us with your like, and if you don't want a Jurassic dinosaur to appear to you tonight at 3am, subscribe and stay until the end. But don't be confused, because despite its apparent fish-based diet, Oxella was not a dinosaur with which you could play without suffering the consequences. This specimen had no problems defending itself from terrestrial predators, thanks to its size and deadly claws more than its bite. Also, it had a deterrent element confirmed by studies, which indicate that it had a bite force of approximately 20 times that of a wolf. In addition to this, Oxala had two spare teeth in each socket, allowing it to replace damaged teeth at the same time, suggesting that it could have been used to attack animals with hard protections. In addition to not being an easy to convince Anelia, it probably was not any defenseless species. Now, an Anelia was an opportunistic carnivore that took advantage of small and medium-sized dinosaurs as well as non-aquatic animals to feed on them from time to time. This is mainly based on the findings seen in its relatives, while likewise, a bionic specimen was found both with fish remains and with the body of a dead adult iguana inside its stomach. This animal most likely spent its daytime staying near water sources where it looked for fish to feed on, while at the same time with nearby terrestrial animals that it could ambush. However, this is where the confusion arises. Scholars do not agree to what extent these specimens were accustomed to water. These doubts have led many to believe that Oxella was an expert swimmer capable of diving deeply in search of food, while others are more conservative, stating that it would not have been an elegant swimmer, but that it was very likely limited to moving quickly in the water, so it preferred to stay on the coasts and wait in shallow waters. Most recent studies tend to support the hypothesis of being a little aquatic animal. Although this is still very debated, whatever the case, we know that Oxella to some extent got wet, since unlike other theropods, its nostrils were placed much higher along its snout, a design intended to help keep water out of the nostrils when its head was partially submerged. So although it clearly had some adaptations, it was most likely destined for an aquatic life. Scientists believe that Oxala, despite having quite shortened legs, was probably fast enough to capture lumbering animals, which were found in the vicinity of lakes and rivers within the reach of this relentless predator. Studies on its location suggest that during the last years, the Cretaceous Oxala lived in a habitat not far from the coast, where it had a mix of fresh and brackish water, while the land itself was dominated by wet areas. Tropical forests where conifers, ferns, and horsetails created thick canopies, providing ample hiding places for all. Beyond these forests, the earth gave way to open areas that were much more brutal, along with a semi-arid environment and a climate with periods of long droughts. Coastal life was 
was extremely abundant, leading Oxala to live alongside many other dinosaurs, including the Malawasaurus, the Osaurus, two Titanosaurs, an Abelosaur, and a Dromaeosaurida also lived alongside other Spinosauruses. In addition, it was the Sigilmasasaurus who approached the size of Oxala, being the second largest predator, but is even more controversial than the twin of the Spinosaurus. In addition to the previously mentioned fish dinosaurs, other animals abounded, being represented by specimens such as turtles and snakes that made life while the dinos reigned on Earth. Much of the life found in these ancient lands was similar to what was seen in the Kem Kem. Fossil records show that Oxala thrived there for millions of years, specifically from about 100 million years ago when it suddenly disappeared from the fossil records. To tell the truth, its extinction is quite interesting, considering that it disappeared exactly at the same time as the Spinosaurus, who also marked the end of the sword back. One of the most accepted proposed hypotheses is that a long drought ended with its prey and sources of fresh water, thus leading to its definitive disappearance. Although it may have gone forever, Oxala remains, without a doubt, one of the most threatening theropods. It's a shame that it hasn't made it as far on the big screen as its twin. However, history and its fossils attest that Among Us lived one of the most imposing and feared dinosaurs that have ever populated the Earth. If you like this video, support us with your wonderful like and subscribe to our channel for more videos of the prehistoric world. If you made it this far, comment the word Jurassic and you will receive a greeting by comments. Without further ado, see you in the next video.